I'm here tonight with um, Carrie Carlisle. Um, who inspired you to be a part of the music industry? Oh, man. Well, you know, I've grown up singing and performing, you know, my whole life. Like, I don't remember a time where I didn't. Um, as, far, as soon as my family um, found out that I could sing and match pitch, I, you know, did music lessons and was in school choir. And then I really didn't fall in love with performing up until maybe college because that's when I you know, really got to kind of choose the path that I wanted to go on, I kind of feel like, and I got to surround myself with other people who loved it as much as I did, and so that's how it started. Okay. Uh, what's your uh, main um, inspiration? My main inspiration? Uh, I honestly... <laughs> I've never been asked that before. <laughs> uh, like a oh. favorite artist or something like that? Oh, gosh. Yeah, no. I have a lot of favorite artists. Um, one of them would have to be Reba McIntyre, Dolly, George Stray, like all like the classic country music stars that I've grown up listening to. I grew up with late 90s early 2000s country a lot so that's what i love and that's i feel like i'd want to be <laughs> so yeah okay uh, we're gonna play your um single um hope for america <laughs>
what can you um tell um about the song what's the story about yeah it? sure so it, it's actually a really cool story so um my grandfather was a principal over at a school where i'm from for several years and um we were looking for a song, you know, uh, my promoters, you know, they were sending us, you know, really great songs, but none of them just seemed to be it. You know what I'm saying? Do you like, I'll know it when I'll know it, but these aren't it. So my grandfather, you know, uh, talked to a guy that owns a radio station here in Memphis. And he says, you know, Hey, if not, that's okay. Do you have any songwriters? And he says, yes, I do. His name's Steve Wiggins. And I've never heard of Steve Wiggins, but some people might have, you know, up until then, of course. But, um, but you yeah, know, he's a great songwriter. He's won several awards, and he was so nice. He said, pick any three songs that you want and off of this album. And then he... he sent me the album and then I listened to the album several times and when I heard that one song Hope for America I knew that that was one of them because I feel like that's what our country really needs is hope right now so uh but yeah no it's great and I'm so glad that he allowed me to record it and he's you know he's you know, he's been so good to me and my family, and it's awesome. <laughs> okay. um, what can you tell me about your best and worst um, performance? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's so hard. Whew. Uh, my worst performance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. My worst performance. I just kind of want to block that out. But since you asked, um, I was about 13 years old and, oh, no, 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 excuse me. I was 14. I was in eighth grade and it was around Christmas time. And when I was a kid, I was prone to get sinus infections. Like I got them all the time and it was terrible. And, um, uh, I was asked to sing at this little event at our church and, um, and it really wasn't a big deal. It was very laid back. Like the kids would go up and they'd sing a song and then they'd sit on stage and the pastor, the head pastor would read a Christmas story. And to be honest, I have no idea what, if they still do that or not. <laughs> um, but anyway, they had asked me to sing at that event because I was still like, you know, in the youth and then the kids, we were all in it, you know? And well, anyway, the day before it happened, I got very, very, very sick. And like, I wasn't running a fever or anything, but it was very obvious. I was congested and sick and, and I told my grandmother, I was like, I don't think I should do this. I don't feel good. It's not going to sound good. Because I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to me performing. It's not because everything has to be perfect. It's because I wanted to give it my 100%. And I didn't want to go up there not going, you know, not being able to give my 100%. Well, anyway, she says, oh, no, you're doing it. They asked you to do it. You need to follow through. And what really made me mad, it was one of my favorite Christmas songs. It was Grown Up Christmas List. I don't know if you've heard that or not, but, yeah, no. I got up there. I squeaked and I swapped through the whole thing. It was horrible. It was the worst performance ever. Oh, gosh. But the best performance. That's hard. Um, oh, gosh. I have to think about that one. Oh, yeah. Um, my best performance, I feel like recently, because uh, I've given a lot of really great ones, but I think the one I take the most pride on 
is um, at my college, I got one more year left. Uh, we do something every week called seminar and it's when, oh, maybe 10 people at the most go and they sing a song and then part of being an, a good artist, doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on, what genre, part of a good artist is knowing when to take constructive criticism from everybody in the room. So basically each of the teachers give you feedback and the students give you feedback, something you could have done better, what wasn't that great, what was great, and so on. Well, anyway, uh, I was just getting into, really getting into wanting to have music be the rest of my mo of my life because I had just left teaching. And um, I had a new accompanist and everything. And one of the songs I was assigned that semester was Sweet Dreams. And she helped me put my own spin on it. And, I mean, I hate to sound biased, but... I think it's better than the path decline version. Like it, it was so good. And, and I did it through a mask too, which was really something, but <laughs> cause it's so hard to sing through a mask, but it was so good. So yeah, no, I think, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay. Um, what are your interests outside the music industry? Uh, interest outside of performance. I like to crochet. I love animals. Um, I used to work at a horse ranch back in high school. I used to barrel race. Um, yeah, that didn't go to, too well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, oh gosh. Um, I like to play video games. Um, I just like hanging out and being with people and... Yeah, so. Okay. Um, where can um, people go and see your videos, music, and events? Yeah, sure. So my song was just released a couple days ago. So I'm on a good bit of all the streaming platforms. I'm on Amazon. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Spotify, Pandora, Shazam. Oh, gosh, there's so many. But I'm on pretty much all the streaming platforms. And uh, I have an artist account on Instagram. It's just Carrie Carlisle Music. And then I have a Facebook page. It's just Carrie Carlisle. And it should just say, like, something like musician slash artist, something like that. And then I have, like, another page. And I mainly did that to just kind of help other blind and visually impaired you know, parents and, you know, just people that want to know more about, you know, daily tasks that I do. It's called Walk by Faith, Not by Sight. So, yeah, you can, I think, go to all those. And, I, and my song's also on YouTube as well. I forgot to mention that. Okay. So, yeah. Well, thanks for being on the show tonight. I really enjoyed talking to you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.